So as he was shopping around for a new shoe sponsor, he told them, if you can get me a full snow camo wrapped Lincoln Navigator, I might choose you. What's up guys? My name is Levi and this is Shred Shop, connecting you to skateboarding. And today we're doing 14 things you didn't know about Osiris Shoes. It's the company you guys have all wanted to know about. It is by far the best skateboard shoe company we've ever seen. And we need to know the history. In this video, we're going to cover a ton of Osiris history as well as skateboard history. We're going to cover how a small skateboard company came and took over the shoe game in the 90s that was dominated by Airwalk and Vans. We're going to talk about the crazy paychecks and payouts that Osiris did for their athletes. And we're going to talk about how the D3 blew up skateboarding and changed the game forever. And obviously so much more. Evol Snowboards. Before we can talk about Osiris, we got to go way back to two friends that started a snowboard company called Evol Snowboards. Evol was crushing it in the snowboard industry. So they decided to branch out and they started Evol Skateboards. At the same time, they started another company called Sound Wakeboards. Interesting to note later on, they actually started a clothing company called LNX, which if you look through old Osiris footage, you'll notice a lot of their riders actually wearing that same clothing brand. In 1995, they decided to launch their next category being Evol Footwear. In 1996, the snowboard industry was slowing down. Sales were going down a little bit. And so with that, Evol footwear was a little bit slow as well. As well, skateboarders were finding it hard to ride for Evol footwear because it had the same name as a board company. So say someone from Shorties couldn't necessarily go and ride for Evol footwear because it had the same name as Evol skateboards, which is in competition with Shorty skateboards. Overall, the shops and people tended to like them and the numbers were doing pretty good at retail. Osiris is born. The start. Osiris was founded by four people. Tony Shen, Doug Weston, Brian Reed, and Tony Magnuson. At that time, Tony Magnuson had finished up his thriving pro skateboard career, where he was pro for 8th Street, and he actually owned a bit of the company as well. He was also one of the original members of the Airwalk skateboard team, so he got to see behind the scenes of how that brand grew and understand what it takes to run a shoe company. Tony Magnuson and Brian Reed started discussing the potential of actually changing the name from Evolve Footwear to something else so that they would be able to branch out and get better team riders for their Evolve Footwear team. In December 1996, Osiris Footwear is born in San Diego, California with a new logo, a new team, and a new brand altogether. Brian Reed. Brian Reed started off as the team manager of Evol Skateboards way back. He then went on to do a lot of creative and even dabbled in footwear design with Osiris. After 20 years of designing shoes and being a part of the brand, as well as being the co-founder right from the beginning of Osiris, Brian Reed moves on to start some of his own skateboard shoe companies. Brian launched two footwear brands that he's currently running, Forwin and Nishuko, and he's still designing forward thinking footwear with them today. The name. After trying to figure out what the name should be, Brian Reed was flipping through some books at a bookstore and came upon the name Osiris in one of those books. Osiris is actually the Egyptian god of agriculture, death, and resurrection. Osiris is often symbolized in hieroglyphics as an eyeball. There isn't too much information out there about that, but if you look closely, you can tell that the Osiris logo probably symbolizes an eyeball. They said that one of the names they were throwing around back in the day for Osiris was actually Unit. This is your last chance. Give us the unit now. Why does everybody want to see my schlong? <laughs> the OG team. The original Osiris team was Dave Mayhew, Adam McNatt, Tyrone Olson, and Gershon Mosley. Not long after, they added Matthias Ringstrom, Chad Knight, Canteen Russell, and Josh Casper. All of these guys got a payday for leaving their previous shoe sponsor to come over to Osiris. As well, it was on the table that if they wanted design and input on their shoes, they could have it. And realistically, those four names weren't so huge that they might get a pro model on another brand, but over at Osiris, they would. 
At that time, people knew that Osiris was having huge payouts for their pro riders, way bigger than other brands were doing. In an article for The Hundreds by journalist Anthony Papalardo, they stated that Tyrone Olsen was making around $20,000 a month on average from Osiris. Well, at that time, most other pro riders with other shoe companies were making between one to two and a half thousand dollars a month. So it was a drastic increase. On Thrasher, Louis Barletta said that one time he went over to Tyrone Olson's house. He was hanging out there. Tyrone opened up a check from Osiris, showed everyone it was for $6,000. He ripped it up in front of them and said, this isn't even worth my time to go cash it. So crazy. The Osiris D3. The name for the shoe, the D3, came from Dave Mayhew's third signature shoe. D for Dave, three for third. His first shoe was called the Mayhem. His second shoe was called the Damager. I would say the D3 is much better. Imagine everyone would be like, oh, yo, did you get some new Damagers? The story goes that Dave Mayhew arrived late to a shoe design meeting. He missed the opportunity to get his name on the shoe that he wanted. After that, him and Brian Reed went shoe shopping for inspiration. They found a pair of hiking boots with huge lace loops, and that is how the D3 was started being designed. It's crazy because when the shoe actually dropped in 1999, it was not that popular. It had a slow sell through, and Osiris after that actually was in the talks of maybe dropping the shoe altogether. In early 2000, our boy, your boy, Fred Durst, shows up to the 2000 Video Music Awards wearing a pair of, you guessed it, the D3s. Thanks to Fred Durst and mainstream popularity, making the shoe blow up overnight. Osiris decided they were gonna ride the wave of the D3. They came out with the D3 NTX, the D3 4.0, and a D3 snowboard boot. The hype and the desire for these shoes was short-lived. By the mid-2000s, the want and the desire for these shoes had faded into non-existence. Over the years, we've seen some crazy celebrities wearing these shoes. Avril Lavigne, Adam Sandler, Fred Durst, Billie Eilish, Tony Hawk, Ellen DeGeneres, and even Rosie O'Donnell. The ripoffs. The success of the D3 spawned a slew of ripoffs. Of course, most recently and probably most famous, there was ASAP Rocky, where he partnered with Under Armour to make a pretty exact D3 ripoff. He partnered with Dave Mayhew on this because this was the person that had said that he designed the D3. This royally pissed off Brian Reed as he was not mentioned or included as the designer. Then there was Louis Vuitton. They did a D3. And of course, it's our guy from the guys who rip off skateboarding, Virgil Abloh. Unlike the Under Armour ripoff, Virgil Abloh did not credit anyone for inspiration. Clearly, he thought of those gigantic eyelets for the lace holes all by himself. Then there was Payless Shoes. They launched an entire line of D3 ripoffs and even ripped off some of the later D3 models like the NTX. The Storm. In 1999, Osiris lets out their legendary, timeless video, The Storm, featuring Brandon Turner, Chris Dobstaff, Chad Fernandez, Dave Mayhew, Jerry Osu, Josh Casper, Tyrone Olsen, Peter Smolik, and more. The video was filmed by David Schlossbach and Jean-Jacques Briquet, who is also famous for making The Blind Video, Almost Round 3, and, and Globe Opinion. Videos, subject to change. If the storm is the finest time in Osiris history, subject to change era, Osiris was a very close second. The team was stacked. Jerry Osu, Louis Barletta, Dylan Reeder, Ali Bulala, Brandon Turner, Chris Dobstaff, Diego Buccieri, James Brockman, Canton Russell, Pierre-Luc Ganon, Feed the Need featured Caswell Berry, Clint Peterson, Corey Duffel, Diego Buccieri, Gailey Mamalu, Garrett Hill, James Brockman, Jimmy Carlin, John Lupfer, John Ratray, Mary Sivanen, Pierre-Luc Ganon, Shereek and Shannon, Stu Graham. Then there was Children of the Revolution. It was an all-kids promo video. Alicia Bergado, Jake Hill, Letitia Bufani, 
Shane Borland, Tyson Bowerbank. Then there was Never Gets Old, Corey Duffel, Caswell Berry, JT Oates, and many more. The G-Bag. Osiruk took the backpack industry by storm when they annoyed everyone on the entire planet when they put some speakers in their backpacks. It actually originally started when Brandon Turner came with the idea to a design meeting. They took it, made a prototype, and it blew up. Everyone was using those Osiris speaker backpacks as well. You could also see other pros that rode for other shoe brands using these backpacks because they were so easy to use. They were quite ahead of their time. I actually think they were pretty dope. Before Bluetooth technology, you would take your MP3 player, which is began before your phone had music on it, and you would plug the aux cord in in the front pocket and on the side panels where you usually have a water bottle holder, they would have speakers in the shape of Osiris logos that would go out from there. So whether you're at the schoolyard, the skate park, the movie theater, people would be playing obnoxious rap music everywhere they went, forcing everyone to listen to their terrible trash music. Brandon Turner also said that when he first started wearing it, people had no grid for it. They didn't understand what was going on. So he'd be standing in a group of people or a crowd of people playing music and people would be so confused. Where's that music coming from? Because they'd never seen something like it. Shout out to Brandon Turner at the age of 39 who switch hard flipped Wallenberg. Who knows? Maybe the G-Bag is the fountain of youth. Peter Smolik. After breakout parts and shorties fulfill the dream and Osiris the Storm, Peter Smolik quickly became one of the most revered and hyped up skateboarders of his time. Because he was so revered, everyone wanted Peter to ride for them. So as he was shopping around for a new shoe sponsor, he told them, if you can get me a full snow camel wrapped Lincoln Navigator, I might choose you. He also said he wanted a full snow camo boot and a full snow camo pro shoe to drop at the same time as the Navigator. He was making crazy money at the time and he was known for spending it as fast as he could make it. After his pants slipped up under his shoe skating and made him slam, he designed some track pants that velcroed to the inside of his shoes. Smolik athletic gear. Talk about swag sag. Modern Osiris. Some way, somehow, Osiris has beat the odds and they are still alive and kicking today. Recently, Osiris actually got themselves in kind of a stinky situation. One of their employees that is no longer with them still had the password to the Osiris handle on their social media and they posted a picture of an Osiris shoe covered in feces as well as a bunch of other really stupid gnarly crap. They currently have no skateboard team and they're probably just sold at mall stores. Keep your eye out for the D3 number 47 dropping so 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 soon. Designed by Dave Mayhew Rebrian. Guys, I'm Levi. This is Shred Shop connecting you to skateboarding and you just watch 14 things you didn't know about Osiris. It's all fun and games. We're thankful for what Osiris put into skateboarding. Even though most of their shoes were super ugly, we are still thankful for them and the team riders and the impact they had. Guys, I'm Levi. This is Shred Shop connecting you to skateboarding and you just watch 14 things you didn't know about Osiris skateboards. If you guys are going out and you're buying real shoes that matter, stay out of Payless, stay out of the malls, stay out of Zoomies and any other big stores. Go and support local. Go find your local skate shop. Support them. If they have an online store, do it there too. Whatever you got to do to support local because skate shops are giving back to skateboarding. If you ever owned Osiris shoes, let us know below and let us know what was your favorite pair. And if you were Peter Smolik, what would have been on your rider for switching over to a brand? He said full wrapped camo Lincoln Navigator. What would your thing been? This week for comment of the week, we got a spicy one, sizzling spicy. Our man, Chris Price with no caps. He says, this ducking video just destroyed my ears. You have to have the volume up because the mic is so bad. And then there are ducking, screeching fireworks in the middle at full volume. Eat crap, dude. Well, this guy hates ducks, we know that much. And also, if you know anything about audio, bro, mics have nothing to do with it. So, just duck it, right?